guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post some videos every Wednesday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And I do that through Bible studies, book reviews, book talks, discussions, and more. So, as the title says, this is going to be my August book haul, and I don't have a lot thankfully for the month of august i didn't buy any books for the month of august um i'm thinking about getting some in september especially because there are some new releases well actually no not september i'll probably do some pre-orders in september for october releases because there are some awesome releases coming out in october but um yeah most of these were sent to me for review or i got from our daily bread so i'm going to start off with the first two items which are not really going to be book related but they're sort of like study related so the first item is going to be my adult bible teacher um sunday school lesson plan i have the large print which is for my mother and then i have the regular size for myself i prefer this size my mom prefers the large print um this is the fall quarter which is september october november i will leave a link down below for it you can get it on um kindu as an ebook but i prefer physical physical copies because i do write in mine but um the large print looks just like this it is a large font um like that and then compared to it we have the regular size font like that so um i'm not sure if you guys can tell the difference in the sizing of it but the regular size is four dollars and fifty cents and then the large print is five dollars and fifty cents they're pretty awesome i enjoy these we use this in my church um to teach i use like i said the teacher's guide you can just get the regular student one um which is the same sizing whether you get the large or the small but they're pretty affordable shipping is pretty fast as well since they changed up their website so yeah i'll leave links down below but i have talked about union gospel press before so we ain't gonna stick on it too long but i do have my lesson plan for uh the fall quarter the next little booklet that I have is Blessed to Be Quarter 3 Guide from In Touch Ministry. So I've noticed that this year they started to do these like quarterly Be Blessed series. I think it's going through the Beatitudes. Um, and I do have the first two quarters. So we have quarter one here and then quarter two. Honestly, I don't even think I got all the way through quarter one. Yeah, I didn't get all the way through um, all of quarter one. I think I got up until week two. Of we I you know I got to week five of January so I did all of January but I haven't gotten into um, February or March and it literally just goes through the entire Beatitudes um, so I do have this one which is quarter four quarter three sorry quarter three and um, yeah it's really just a simple book three months worth of um, information it goes week by week so it's not something you have to do like on a daily basis just pick a day out the week and um, the way it's set up is let me just flip to the front you have your little introduction letter from Charles F Stanley um, then you have your monthly sort of look so it says a month here and then you get some information about the Beatitudes and what you're going to be reading for that month and then it goes straight into your week ones so um, it gives you whatever scripture you're going to focus on from the Beatitudes, a prayer, and then it just breaks down that verse and helps you to memorize the entire Beatitudes. Hopefully that just made sense. But um, I will leave a link down below to where you can sign up for this. I'm not sure if they still have it available, but um, I'll leave the link down below. But I do have my uh, quarterly guide three. Okay, guys, so the next set of things are going to be from Adelie Bread. I have two DVDs and uh, three booklets and a notepad. So I always get questions of how I get these stuff from Adelie Bread for free. Basically, if you sign up for their uh, devotional, the Adelie Bread devotional, um, they always send these little envelopes with these little cards in them like this this doesn't show my address right okay <laughs> they always show these little cards put these cards inside i would say every time you get these fill them out even if you don't want them just fill them out because it's something you can always just pass on to someone else um so i have several of those that i fill out and i ship back out to them and they send me stuff for free so that's how i do have these so um the first two are dvds this one is a dvd study and it's god of surprise the life-changing unexpected ways god works for our good by bill crowder um, and here's what that looks like. I'm not sure. Does this come with a study guide? No. But I'm pretty sure you can buy the actual study guide booklet separate. Sometimes it does come inside, but this one does not. But it's six sessions. Um, it's the surprise of divine rescue, the surprise of life and death, of God's working, of full provision, of long preparation, and of God's comfort. And um, God of Surprise is a book, ebook, and audiobook that you can get. So awesome. 
um and I've, again i've heard so much from bill crowder i do have a few of his books i have not read them yet but you know we're going to get through all the books eventually eventually but i have the study i also have the holy land by um john a beck by our daily bread of course and i have one of his books i have all of his studies digitally and um i have a few other items from him i'm not sure if i have this dvd which is why i haven't unwrapped it yet because if i do have it i don't want to keep it but I don't think I own this one from him. I think I own his other two and not this one. So um, if I don't own this one, this will be added to my collection. Um, and this is just episodes that travel to um, King David's Jerusalem, the three faiths and the one land from exile to new hope. So it's basically um, connecting the land with its story. So you're, you're traveling through the different lands, Jerusalem, the hill country, Jezreel Valley I think that's how you say that and other locations that are like mentioned a lot in the Bible so I like books I like DVDs and studies like this because I'm all about the history of the lands and things like that so we have this the next item I have is going to be um, a duo it came together the first item was the notepad which has first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18 in the NLT translation which says always be joyful never stop praying be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ jesus and that's how it looks it's just a notepad i've had several of these notepads i love them i'm always writing on a notepad and it came with the prayer 90 day devotional um from our daily bread it is edited and compiled by dave brandon though and i have my own copy i always get these um they come in different types of uh topics prayer um there's one on the heavens there's one i think on worship i think um there's one on faith there's one on love so i have several of these and i always request them because they're fun and easy to give to people like on the go um so at the top you get a title something specified to read a specific verse that the devotional goes to and then a prayer tip and it tells you who also wrote it um so some of them most of them are written by dave brandon others authors are included as well but um yeah it's just fun quick and easy and it's not like a dated thing so you can do this whenever you want and um i'm currently working on building a tiny library um and i'll explain what that is for the end of the video but i'm working on that and um i want to be able to include books like this in my little tiny library that i'm gonna have my tiny free library excuse me okay so the next little booklet i have is moments of peace for moms 365 day de daily devotional from our daily bread i love their devotional books but i cannot stand their quarterly devotionals for this year um even last year i just wasn't attached to them i don't know why i think i'm just not i'm, I'm kind of outgrowing their their writing as far as devotionals and their quarterlies but their books like this are phenomenal for me and um she is gorgeous i'm a mom of course i do have a little boy who is six years old but um it says find rest in god and it is dated of course for this one but i don't follow dated de um, devotionals like at all like ever i just don't i don't like the dated feel i feel like i have to be consistent and if i fall off i feel like i'm left behind so i just started reading whenever i got the book from the first page even if it's like if it's like november and the devotional starts january 1st i start january 1st on november because that's just how i feel um but yeah it has a title it has a key scripture it also gives you some other scriptures to read at the top so your date is at the corner here over here you have some scriptures you have a title a key verse your devotional and some of them tend to have prayers let's see if i can find one that includes a prayer of course now i can't find it but some of them do have prayers they have lots of scriptures involved they have questions to answer so i do love little mini devotionals like this okay so then we're going to get into my books and all four of these biblical fiction books or christian books are from um rebel which is funny so the first one is actually a september um book but i'm going to show it now anyway and i'll re-show it again in september but it's the edge of belonging by amanda cox it's from rebel like i said and um this is a christian fiction i don't know much about it it doesn't say specifically what it is like the genre but it says when ivy rose returns to her hometown to oversee her late grandmother's estate sale she soon discovers that the woman left behind more than trinkets and photo frames she provided a path to the truth behind ivy's adoption shocked ivy six clues to her past but a key piece to the mystery is missing 24 years earlier harvey james finds an abandoned newborn who gives him a sense of human connection for the first time in his life his desire to care for the baby runs up against the stark fact that 
that he is homeless. When he becomes entwined with two people seeking to help him find his way, Harvey knows he must keep the baby a secret or risk losing the only person he's ever loved. In this dual timeline story from the debut novelist Amanda Cox, the truth, both the search for it and the desire to keep it from others, takes center stage as Ivy and Harvey grapple with love, loss, and letting go. So that sounds really interesting. So this looks like it's going to be like a hard-hitting contemporary that I'm probably not ready to read. But I like the cover. For some reason, the cover really calls to me. I love the covers. The covers. I love the colors. It's giving me like the fall vibes. So um, yeah, we have this. So the next book I'm super excited for because I have read from this author when she worked with her father. I read The Girl Behind the Red Rope and that book was phenomenal. I will be rereading that book and giving it more time so that I can annotate because I didn't do that the first time I read it. But nine by Rochelle Decker this is going to be Christian suspense and what it says on the back is some secrets can't stay hidden Zoe Johnson has spent most of her life living in the shadows never drawing attention to herself never investing in people or places but when a wide-eyed bedraggled right bedraggled teenager with no memory walks into the diner where Zoe works everything changes against her better judgment Zoe who has been trying to outrun her own painful memories of the past finds herself attempting to help a girl who doesn't seem to have any past at all with little warning they must follow the only sure thing they know a woman hundreds of miles away will either save them or be the last person to see them alive i mean i'm sold and the cover is giving me real like october vibes real creepy spooky vibes so this is definitely hopefully going to be a read for october because um yes the cover is gorgeous but again this is from rochelle decker her father is ted decker which i have read a few of his books now because i'm currently reading the left behind series we know I'm loving it. And like I said, I read The Girl Behind the Red Rope, which I adored. So we have this. The next book is going to be from Jane Kirkpatrick, and it's something worth doing, a novel of an early suffragist, excuse me, an early suffragist. <laughs> um, honestly, this was a cover request. I'm not even going to lie. This cover was so pretty to me. I have a bad habit of doing cover requests, which is why I'm trying to get out of that habit. But um, this takes place in 1853 and it follows Abigail Scott, who is 19 years old. She's a teacher in Oregon Territory, but then she's, she marries Ben Dunaway and marriage, may, giving up on teaching to basically, you know, be a mom and a wife and all that stuff that they believe that women should be at the time. But she feels like she's meant to be more than that. So this is all about her going into, um, the working world and getting, uh, getting the chance for women to vote and really just have other things outside of the norm of being a mom and a wife if that makes sense um it sounds really interesting to me but honestly like I said this was a cover request the cover itself is like really pretty I'm kind of liking though the the books that are coming out with like the landscape on the bottom and the person on top or the landscape on the bottom with like something simple like this for some reason it's calling to me but um this one is historical fiction Okay, and this last book segues also into my um, nonfiction books that I have, but it's also from Rebel. And I got this book in my book box from the Delilah box. You can click the on screen to go watch that video. But it's Journey to the World by Diana Wallace-Taylor. And of course, this is basically biblical fiction focusing on the Samaritan woman at the well and Jesus. It's her story before she meets Jesus. So I'm super, super excited to dive into this. And we're excited. I know my sister Stephanie read it. So... I'm definitely excited to read it and because I love the, the Gospel of John and I love the story of the Samaritan woman I'm interested to see how Diana Wallace Taylor takes that story and um, creates something profound around it so we have this so going into the nonfiction, this one also came in my Delilah box and it's falling free by Shannon Shannon Martin um, rescued from a life I always wanted so this is a book I'm not sure if I'm going to keep just because I don't have an interest in reading it right now and I'm trying to be mindful of the books that I do keep at home. So you might see this in my unhaul video, which I have a massive unhaul coming soon. A massive one, so bear with me. But um, it says, Shannon Martin had the perfect life. A cute farmhouse on six rambling acres, a loving husband, three adorable kids, money, friends, and a close-knit church. A safe and happy existence. But when the bottom dropped out through a series of shocking changes and ordinary inconveniences, the Martins followed God's call to something radically different. A small house on the other side of the urban tracks, a shoestring income, and a challenged public school, and the harshness of county jail where her husband is now chaplain. Yet the family's plunge from safety was the best thing that could have happened to them. Falling free charts the pilgrimage from the self-focused wisdom of the world to the topsy-turvy life of God's more being found in less so um it sounds interesting but not something that I'm personally interested in reading right now so like I said this might be in my unhaul but I did get this in my Delilah box 
okay and the next five are also from baker publishing so um what is it called baker publishing group has several branches so they do have uh rebel as a branch they have chosen they have bethany house they have uh baker books they have different like houses under their like one parent company so i have one from chosen and then i have four from bethany house so um the one from chosen is called prophetic secrets learning the language of heaven by jennifer i'm i'm not gonna butcher that name but jennifer e is what i'm gonna say um, and it says, when God speaks, will you hear? In her direct and enlightening teaching style, best-selling author Jennifer E. helps readers sharpen their prophetic gifting in order to minister healing and breakthrough, resulting in a supernatural display of God's glory. You will deepen your understanding of this unique anointing as Jennifer teaches practical and biblical principles to help you cherish your time in the sacred place with God, distinguish the extraordinary forth-telling voice of God, gain insight into signs and dreams, avoid fads and heresies, and discern when to hold a prophetic word and when to let it go um this is what i'm really interested in because i do have an issue with um i don't, I don't i'm not gonna say prophecy because it's not prophecy but when it comes to god giving me a prophetic word to share i get nervous in sharing it um and that's one thing i'm trying to get out of because i know that when he gives you a word to give to someone it needs to be said and um it is a struggle for me at times if you guys saw the video of when I shared my first sermon at. If you haven't, you can click the I to go watch that. I shared that video um, because I did my first sermon at, at church for one of my brothers who's one of the pastors at the church um, for his service. And during that whole time of me preparing my little sermon to speak, um, God was giving me a word to give to him, but I kept trying to avoid putting it in my sermon and God would not let me move until I gave that word to him. So, um, it's it's things like that where I need to learn to get better at being more vocal and open. I'm not a very vocal person. I know it seems like I am, but I get I'm comfortable with the camera pretty much. Um, and when it comes to talking about the word, I'm very comfortable. But when it comes to giving someone a word, I tend to I don't want to say skip out on it because that's terrible, but I do tend to not say it. And um, that is never a good thing, never a good thing. So I'm trying to get better at releasing it when God is telling me to release it. Um, so yeah, I thought this would be an interesting read. It's a short one too. So if I don't care for it, I can definitely just pass it along. But I think this is when I could definitely, um, oh, what's that? She got a color chart in here, meaning of colors and dreams. I love it. She tells you what the positive meaning and the negative meaning is. Oh, this is definitely a book I'm keeping. And what I like is that there's kingdom principles and then she has these reflection questions over here as well. So we know how I love a good interactive book. We know. So I'm excited. I'm really, really excited to read this. And I do have a lot of books all about um, prophetic gifts and prophecy just because I know that that's an area God is calling me to that I'm completely nervous about doing and stepping into like completely nervous and terrified to do but um yeah i have it to check out the next book i got um the well the next four are going to be from bethany house and this one is fascinating bible studies on every parable by dr william h marty and it's for personal or small group use and um it literally just goes through the parables i'm trying to uh get to the table of contents so you have the Old Testament parables, which is only two of them, which is the trees and the thornbush king and then the rich man and poor man from the Old Testament. And then you have all the New Testament ones, which they broke down, I think, into two groups. You have the nature of the kingdom and then you have one that is focused on the ethics of the kingdom. And um, it sounds really good. I'm not sure if this is interactive or not. It, yeah, it looks to be interactive. So I'm interested to see how this works out. I am going to try this out for myself personally. Yep, there's interaction. We love interaction. There's the reflect section. There is the optional question section, but I wouldn't make this optional. This would definitely be like something I would do for sure. And then you have your memory verse, which is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Some of them come with charts. So I am excited. I'm excited for this. This is one that I got specifically so that I could utilize it here on the channel with you all, of course, but also for myself um, because I am trying to branch out into teaching. I think teaching for me is one of the biggest things that I think I want to really dive into when it comes to ministry. Um, I don't know. I just I find so much joy in studying the word and diving deep and um, helping others understand it. So this was definitely something I knew that I wanted for myself. And I could probably try to squeeze this into my church as well um, as something like that we use. So we'll see. But I did get this.
The next book I got is going to be The Fire of God's Presence by A.W. Tozer. It's drawing near to a holy God. It is compiled and edited by James S. By James L. Snyder, excuse me. Um, but it says, what would it look like to encounter God face to face? And I don't want to read no more about it. I, that's all I'm going to stick to. Um, A.W. Tozer and C.S. Lewis are two well-known Christian authors that I really, really want to dive into. Two well-known Christian men um, that I really want to study up on. I feel like there's another person that I want to read on, but I can't think of their name right now. But um, anytime I see anything from Baker with C.S. Lewis or A.W. Tozer, I'm requesting it because I do want to read their work. Their work can be a little um, difficult to read at times because of the time that they originally wrote it in. But I'm still interested to uh, see what they were all about. I have quite a few of their books so far. And um, I'm interested in this. Let me see. So it talks about Moses at the burning bush. It talks about being made for God's presence, the foundation for experiencing the presence of God. The school of silence prepares for the burning bush. Ooh. So the focus of this is basically on um, the burning bush. I'm just going to read what it says on the back because so it makes sense. So it says, have you ever truly experienced God's presence? If not, what do you think is getting in the way? When Moses met God at the burning bush, it changed his life and his perception of who God is. In that burning bush moment, he began to understand and appreciate the sacredness of worship. Proper worship has to fit the one we are worshiping. So if we are worshiping God, we must do it on his terms. Oh, that, that's a word right there. All right. This means having a spirit of reverence and holiness like Moses taking off his shoes and kneeling before him. The bush's fire did not frighten Moses, but rather it poured the essence of sacredness into his life. It gave him an experience of God's presence he had never had before. Let this book teach you how, like Moses, to encounter God afresh. That actually just like blew my mind. So I'm excited for this and I love the cover. The cover is really nice and it's like a shimmer shimmery shimmery there's like a shimmer to the cover i don't know if you guys are really able to see it maybe if i like yeah you guys can sort of see it's kind of a shimmer to it which i think is really pretty but i'm super excited to read this now like i'm so excited so that we have this the next book is again like one of those study bible books study bible books bible study books excuse me and it's 16 bible studies for your small group it includes icebreaker questions insightful study questions application points prayer prompts and more by ryan Lok Lok Loksumi. I'm not gonna say that right. So yeah, that author right there. Um, and I don't have to read the back because it's pretty, you know, simple. But um, it talks about fellowship with God, fellowship with each other, loving one another, um, gathering, putting each other first, how to build each other up, being clothed in Christ likeness, humble, being humble and hospitable, dodging division, givers of courage, judgmental no more, sacrificial sharers uh and more so lots of scripture included in this lots of questions i'm loving that okay they're basically kind of like mini topical um bible studies if that makes sense there's like no scripture base they're not that's not what i'm trying to say how am i trying to say this lord yeah pay me no mind y'all i'm tired that's tired but it is a topical base and that is giving you a topic with several scriptures to focus on and then there are questions in between so um it's kind of like how you have a scripture here that's giving you romans and then there's questions a little bit of information more information uh oh no this is a scripture actually and then you go into more questions on the next page and so forth and so on so hopefully that just made sense but uh i like that at the beginning of each one they give you a social portion the social portion is kind of like the question so you have your personal question that you can ask um your open-ended spiritual question and then a lead-in question to the subject of the study then you have your actual study section which includes the questions and the scriptures that you need to focus on and i think that's it oh and then you get the keys in the study and then you get some prayer things as well so that's going to be interesting. I'm definitely going to go through this before I share it with you guys. Because um, I think this would be cool to like share with you guys in like a study with me video. But um, we have this. Okay, and the last one I have is Why is that in the Bible? The most perplexing verses and stories and what they teach us by Eric J. Barker. I, mm, yep, I can't pronounce these authors' names and I don't like butchering them. But that person there. Um, and it's the Bible passages you've always wondered about um, being explained. So kind of like uh, the romantic wording in song of songs i know a lot of people don't like that because it can be over um it can be sexualized sometimes um the song of songs or song of solomon's if some people call it the eat my flesh and drink my blood sweat like drops of blood um 
the story of Ananias and Sapphira, I think that's how you say her name. The battle for Moses' body, bodily discharges, resurrection at Christ's death, dismemberment of a concubine, head coverings, her being eaten by worms. Just little things that we always tend to question, but no one really likes to answer. I guess that's what he's going through. Um, and it seems to be stocked with scripture, like every time of the page is scripture. So we know I like that. We know I love that. So I'm going to really enjoy this. Um, when I do get to it, this will definitely be staying in my collection. Um, I don't like to say collection because I don't like to collect books. I tend to read all of my books. Um, so yeah, we have this. I rambled on enough. That is it for this video. I will see you guys next Wednesday. I know I'm trying to still get used to this new schedule. I miss posting twice a week but life so um the next video i don't know what the next video was going to be honestly i have no idea i'm like on the fly right now i have a bunch of videos in mind that i want to do but some of them take time but um we'll see what the next video might be i, I think i want to do a sit down discussion on a scripture that i've been like studying up on um and do a bible study um, D.O.G. will be launching on the 19th, Daughter of Grace. So, you can go to the channel now and subscribe. The video is ready, is like already set to premiere. So, you will go to the channel and see that it's set to premiere at 12 p.m. on the 19th. I'm super, super excited and nervous for the launch of that ministry. And it's pretty much the same thing that I'm doing here, but it's going to be more so geared towards teenagers. Because I know here I'm talking to a lot more adults. And I know some of my teen subscribers don't fully understand or um, some things can go kind of like over their head. So, you know, sort of grace is in the works. Now, if you're if you're a male, it's okay. You're a son of increase, you're a son of grace, it's all right. But it's called daughter of grace because I'm a woman. Of course, I'm a female. But um, I, of course, support the men out there. And I thank you so much to the men and um, the guys who support and watch my channel. It means so much to me. But other than that, that's it. I ain't got nothing else to talk about right now. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.